Hey, what's up guys? It's been a while since I've made a video while driving, but I figured I'd do it today. Just dropped off my daughter and son at school, heading to my office and thinking about the email I wrote you guys this morning or the blog post that you can read down below every day, five days a week. Besides making a video, I also write you a letter. And today I spoke about fears, but the position I took on fears is a little different than you might typically hear. You know, when it comes to fears, people say things in terms of ignoring the fears or uh, overcoming the fears or, um, or really waiting until there are no fears. I, I think that myth is kind of dissolved already. Nobody waits till there's no fears. I think we all realize at this point that life is full of fears. It's full of pain. It's supposed to be. You know, that's like asking for a day with no night. Life is pleasurable because of the pain. Life is pleasurable because of the obstacles. Life is pleasurable because of the fears, right? Otherwise, we'd have no contrast. We wouldn't know what good life is if we didn't have pain. So anyway, uh, Joseph Campbell, I spent a lot of time reading and studying. I love his work on mythology and the use of symbols to recognize the mechanics of the unconscious. And uh, he refers to the part of ourselves that we basically cut off and cast into uh, oblivion as the shadow aspect of ourselves. So basically what that means is those parts of yourself that have been deemed as uh, naughty or no good when you were a kid, you kind of cut off and cast into the shadow. So a lot of our sexual repression gets cast into the shadow. Um, a lot of our hyperactivity or energy or exuberance as children gets cut off and cast into the shadow. And in the shadow is where these things, our natural exuberance, our natural sexuality, our natural energy, our spontaneity, these are all things that reside in the shadow because they're behind us. In other words, we don't look at them with the light of day as we do normal things in our, our activity. The problem is with shadows, right? Things that you've cut off or the world has deemed inappropriate for you that gets cut off into the shadows is that they're always there. They're always manipulating and working on you from the shadow world, from underneath, from your unconscious. So today we were talking about fears in my article and one of the things that allows you to know when you're approaching your shadow or aspects of yourself that you've cut off and placed into the nether world is that there are fears, right? So for example, there may be fears associated with, with sexuality, right? I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to engage in sexual pursuits because I've been turned down before, girls don't like me, or you know, maybe I've had a circumstance where I performed poorly in bed and, uh, and I don't want to recreate that again. So you cast your sexuality into the shadow and you know, you end up not, you know, never having a healthy sexual relationship. We do this with our exuberance or our, well, exuberance is, a, is an immature form of personal power and self-will. We do this with our own personal power and self-will by rejecting our magnificence. There, in, in Australia, there's this, I, or Australian friend of mine taught me this saying called chopping down the tall poppies. In essence, we live in a world, society, uh, and, and uh, reality where tall poppies are cut down. And in, in, in other words, whenever you rise above, whenever you rise above what is deemed appropriate by the mass of people and you rise, in other words, like the poppies grow, they stay level, the one that rises up, you gotta chop them down. So chopping down the tall poppies means putting you in your place. Sit down, shut up, you're not as special as you think you are. Well, we all know we're special, so um, that what happens is that special part of us that gets shut down, cut off, and cast into the shadow grows, um, but in a perverted way. It grows in sort of a, uh, either a coward or tyrant manifestation in our unconscious. So instead of accepting our own power, we, uh, we become a coward by giving it to other people and then being resentful when they have it and we don't. So we, there are all kinds of mind tricks that we play on ourselves to fuck ourselves in order to continue to live with our shadows. Joseph Campbell, like I mentioned earlier, talks about eating your shadow. It's fucking crazy, right? You know, what, what happens when you eat something? You put it in your mouth, you chew it up, right? You work on it and you absorb it. It becomes a part of you. What if, and this is really just a question I'm posing to you, 
What if you took those split off parts of yourself that were deemed inappropriate, that you're scared of, and integrated or reintegrated them back into your character? What if you got back that natural spontaneity and personal will and self power that's associated with being an exuberant, exuberant four year old, right? What if you brought that back, but you brought it back with a level of maturity associated with being in your 30s or 20s or whatever the case may be? What if you brought back your cut off sexual repression from the experiences that you had early on in life with, uh, with your parents and society? Right? It's, it's inappropriate to feel sexuality or to to uh, engage in even sexual behavior as a child as a child now you think that might sound strange but children like to play with their genitals and um, and it's self exploration before you <laughs> before you ever get a chance to explore someone else so it's sexual behavior as a child you need to explore your sexuality um, and maybe even mimic some sexual behaviors at the age of three four five six uh, which are quickly shut down you know penises and vaginas are bad um, sexuality, you don't want to be a slut. People do this to their daughters all the time, you know. Daughters is recognizing and experiencing with their sexuality and, you know, at a young age, because you do go through a sexual revolution um, prior to your homosexual stage, which is, you know, like ages seven to adolescence. There's a stage where, you know, we're really curious about our sexuality and we start to notice sexual contrast between ourself and the parents of the opposite sex. But anyway, my point here, is what would happen if you took that, took those things that are naughty, that have been repressed, that have been cast into the shadow, and which, by the way, don't go away. They don't disappear. They're basically just hanging with you and, uh, and causing you to behave in a perverted way. Anytime something gets cast into the shadows or gets cast away or gets suppressed, it doesn't disappear. It grows in its pervertedness. What I mean by that is like the term perverted means it's changed. It turns into something else. It's transformed. It turns ugly. You know, uh, perverted sexuality that arises out of suppressed sexuality ends up looking like priests that molest little boys because they've been, they've been led to a lifestyle of celibacy, but they're not mature enough to handle it. So the the sexual energy grows perverted and they end up touching the peepees of little boys, right? Doing all kinds of weird shit that doesn't serve them and, and destroys other people's lives. One example, it's just one example. Look at your life. Where are you suffering and where are you facing boundaries that you're not willing to overcome? You will know that they're arising when you feel fear, when you experience fear. Fear is your friend because fear is a demarcation of your self-imposed boundaries. And those are the boundaries that we wanna get rid of so that we can become a stronger version of ourselves. So my invitation to you today, friends, is to explore your shadow aspects. Explore those parts of you that you don't like. Explore those things that if we're given the attention that they deserve instead of being cast off into the shadow may help you become a stronger version of yourself and you know that you're approaching those things. You know you're getting close to those things. You know that you're wrestling with those things when you get icky feelings in your body associated with fear, anger, frustration, sadness, or depression. When faced with people, circumstances, and ideas that tickle or touch that sore spot. And that's my message for y'all today. Keep growing stronger. Talk to you tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs>